The United Malays National Organisation Malay, Pertubuhan Kabangsan Malayu Bursatu, Jawi, Vertun Kabisan Malay Bursat abbreviated UMNO or lesser known as PEKEMBAR is Malaysia's main opposition political party. It is a founding member of the Barisan Nasional Coalition which, with its predecessor the Alliance, had been the government of Malaysia and dominated the country's politics from independence until 2018. Until then, all of Malaysia's prime ministers had been members of UMNO, until Mahathir Mohamad became the first prime minister from Pakatan Harapan, and the first prime minister to have tenures with two different parties. UMNO's goals are to uphold the aspirations of Malay nationalism and the dignity of race, religion and country. The party also aspires to protect the Malay culture as the national culture and to uphold, defend and expand Islam across Malaysia. In the 2018 UMNO general elections, which were considered by many as crucial to the party's progression, former Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi was elected UMNO president, who gained more votes than his rivals Kairi Jamaluddin, former UMNO youth chief, and Tengku Razali Hamza, UMNO veteran. History After the British returned to Malaya in the aftermath of World War II, the Malayan Union was formed. However, the Union was met with much opposition due to its constitutional framework, which allegedly threatened Malay sovereignty over Malaya. A series of Malay Congresses were held, culminating in the formation of the Nationalist Party, UMNO on 10 May 1946 at the Third Malay Congress in Johor Bahru, with Datuk An Jafar as its leader. UMNO strongly opposed the Malayan Union, but originally did not seek political power. UMNO has no choice with continuing to play its supporting role to the British rulers. The British cooperated with UMNO leaders and helped to defeat the communist insurgency. In 1949, after the Malayan Union had been replaced by the Semi Autonomous Federation of Malaya, UMNO shifted its focus to politics and governance. The Malay people thus searched for their birth rights since the government of Malaya did not proclaim it openly, resulting in a confusing situation. However, it is crucial that UMNO's struggle is apparently not racial based as they also fought for other races once they are at the helm of the country. In 1951, An Jafar left UMNO after failing to open its membership to non-Malay Malayans to form the Independence of Malaya Party Imp. Tunku Abdul Rahman replaced Dato An as UMNO president. That same year, the Radical Party won Thane Malaya, the Georgetown Municipal Council election, claiming six out of the nine seats available. In the following year, the Kuala Lumpur branch of UMNO formed an ad hoc and temporary electoral pact with the Selangor branch of Malayan Chinese Association MCA to avoid contesting the same seats in the Kuala Lumpur Municipal Council elections. UMNO and MCA eventually carried nine out of the twelve seats, dealing a crushing blow to the IMP. After several other successes in local council elections, the coalition was formalized as an alliance. In 1954, in 1954, state elections were held. In these elections, the alliance won 226 of the 268 seats nationwide. In the same year, a federal legislative council was formed, comprising 100 seats. 52 would be elected, and the rest would be appointed by the British High Commissioner. The alliance demanded that 60 of the seats be elected, but despite the Tunku flying out to London to negotiate, the British held firm. Elections for the council were held in 1955, and the alliance, which had now expanded to include the Malayan Indian Congress Mike, issued a manifesto stating its goals of achieving independence by 1959, requiring a minimum of primary school education for all children, protecting the rights of the Malay rulers as constitutional monarchs, ending the communist emergency, and reforming the civil service through the hiring of more Malayans as opposed to foreigners. When the results were released, it emerged that the alliance had won 51 of the 52 Two seats contested, with the other seat going to PA, the Pan Malayan Islamic Party, a group of Islamists that split from UMNO. The Tunku became the first chief minister of Malaya. Throughout this period, the Malayan emergency had been ongoing. The Malayan Races Liberation Army (MRLA), supported by the Malayan Communist Party (MCP), committed acts of terror such as tearing down farms, disrupting transportation and communication networks, attacking police stations, and so forth. Their stated goal was the end of colonialism in Malaya. 
The British declared the MCP, along with several left-wing political groups, illegal in 1948. In 1955, the Alliance government together with the British High Commissioner declared an amnesty for the communist insurgents who surrendered. Representatives from the Alliance government also met with leaders of the MCP in an attempt to resolve the conflict peacefully, as their manifesto in the election stated. Chin Peng, the MCP Secretary General, insisted that the MCP be allowed to contest elections and be declared a legal political party as a pre-condition to laying down arms. However, the Tunku rejected this, leading to an impasse. In 1956, the Tunku led a group of negotiators, comprising alliance politicians and representatives of the Malay rulers, to London. There, they brokered a deal with the British for independence. The date of independence was set as 31 August 1957 on the condition that an independent commission is set up to draft a constitution for the country. The Alliance government was also required to avoid seizing British and other foreign assets in Malaya. A defence treaty would also be signed. The Reed Commission, led by Lord William Reed, was formed to draft the constitution. Although enshrining concepts such as federalism and a constitutional monarchy, the proposed constitution also contained provisions protecting special rights for the Malays, such as quotas in admission to higher education and the civil service, and making Islam the official religion of the federation. It also made Malay the official language of the nation, although the right to vernacular education in Chinese and Tamil would be protected. Although the Tunku and the Malay rulers had asked the Reed Commission to ensure that, in an independent Malaya all nationals should be accorded equal rights, privileges and opportunities and there must not be discrimination on grounds of race and creed. The Malay privileges, which many in UMNO backed, were cited as necessary by the Reed Commission as a form of affirmative action that would eventually be phased out. These measures were included as Articles 3, 152 and 153 of the Constitution. As expected, independence was declared by the Tunku in Merdeka Stadium on 31 August 1957, marking a transition into a new era of Malayan and Malaysian politics. Independence In Malaya's first general elections in 1959, the Alliance coalition led by UMNO won 51.8% of the votes, resulting in 74 out of 104 seats, enough for an absolute two-thirds majority in parliament, which would not only allow them to form the government again but amend the constitution at will. However, for the alliance, the election was marred by internal strife when MCA leader Lim Chong EU demanded his party be allowed to contest 40 of the 104 seats available. When the Tunku rejected this, many of Lim's supporters resigned, and ran in the election as independents, which cost the alliance some seats. In 1961, the Tunku mooted the idea of forming Malaysia which would consist of Singapore, Sabah, Sarawak, all of which were then British colonies and also British protectorate state of Brunei. The reasoning behind this was that this would allow the central government to control and combat communist activities, especially in Singapore. It was also feared that if Singapore achieved independence, it would become a base for Chinese chauvinists to threaten Malayan sovereignty. To balance out the ethnic composition of the new nation, the other states, whose Malay and indigenous populations would balance out the Singaporean Chinese majority, were also included. After much negotiation, a constitution was hammered out. Some minor changes had been made for instance, the Malay privileges were now made available to all, Bumi Putra, a group comprising the Malays and other indigenous peoples of Malaysia. However, the new states were also granted some autonomy unavailable to the original nine states of Malaya. After negotiations in July 1963, it was agreed that Malaysia would come into being on 31 August 1963, consisting of Singapore, Sabah and Sarawak. Brunei pulled out due to some reasons, which one of it was the armed revolt by Brunei People's Party, Party Rakyat Brunei and the decision of Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin III to not join Malaysia. The Philippines and Indonesia strenuously objected to this development, with Indonesia claiming Malaysia represented a form of neo-colonialism and the Philippines claiming Sabah as its territory. The United Nations sent a commission to the region which approved the merger after having delayed the date of Malaysia's formation to investigate. Despite further protests from the Indonesian president, Sukarno, the formation of Malaysia was proclaimed on 16 September 1963. Indonesia then declared a confrontation 
with Malaysia, sending commandos to perform guerrilla attacks in East Malaysia Sabah and Sarawak. The confrontation was ended when a military coup replaced Sukarno with Suharto. The Philippines, which had withdrawn diplomatic recognition from Malaysia, also recognized Malaysia around the same time. To reflect the change of name to Malaysia, UMNO's coalition partners promptly altered their names to the Malaysian Chinese Association and the Malaysian Indian Congress. Several political parties in East Malaysia, especially Sarawak, also joined the alliance to allow it to contest elections there. In the 1963 Singapore state elections, the alliance decided to challenge Lee Kuan Yew's governing People's Action Party PAP through the Singapore Alliance Party. UMNO politicians actively campaigned in Singapore for the Singapore Alliance, contending that the Singapore Malays were being treated as second-class citizens under the Chinese-dominated PAP government. All of the UMNO-backed Malay candidates lost to PAP candidates. UMNO Secretary General Syed Jafar Albar travelled to Singapore to address the Malay populace. At one rally, he called the PAP Malay politicians un Islamic and traitors to the Malay race, greatly straining PAP UMNO relations. The PAP politicians, who saw this as a betrayal of an earlier agreement with the alliance not to contest elections in Malaysia and Singapore respectively, decided on running on the mainland in the 1964 general election. Although the PAP contested nine parliamentary seats and attracted large crowds at its rallies, it won only one seat. The strain in race relations caused by the communal lines along which the political factions had been drawn led to the 1964 race riots in Singapore. Alliance leaders also were alarmed at Lee's behavior, which they considered unseemly for the chief minister of a state. They thought he was acting as if he were the prime minister of a sovereign nation. Finance Minister Tan Su Sin of the MCA labelled Lee as the greatest, disruptive force in the entire history of Malaysia and Malaya. Lee now seemed determined to press forward politically and continue contesting elections nationwide, with the formation of the Malaysian Solidarity Council a coalition of political parties which called for a Malaysian Malaysia, duplicating the effort introduced earlier by Dato An Jafar. On 7 August 1965, Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman, seeing no alternative to avoid further bloodshed, advised the Parliament of Malaysia that it should vote to expel Singapore from Malaysia. Despite last-ditch attempts by PAP leaders, including Lee Kuan Yew, to keep Singapore as a state in the Union, the Parliament on 9 August 1965 voted 126-0 in favour of the expulsion of Singapore. Tunku opened his speech in Parliament with the words. In all the ten years of my leadership of this house I have never had a duty so unpleasant as this to perform. The announcement which I am making concerns the separation of Singapore from the rest of the Federation." On that day, a tearful Lee Kuan Yew announced that Singapore was a sovereign, independent nation and assumed the role of Prime Minister of the new nation. His speech included this quote, "...for me, it is a moment of anguish." All my life, my whole adult life, I have believed in merger and unity of the two territories. Hence, Singapore became the only country in the history of the modern world to gain independence against its own will. After the separation and independence of Singapore in 1965, the Singapore branch of UMNO was renamed the Singapore Malay National Organisation Pertubuhan Kabangsan Melayu Singapura. Post-separation After the separation of Singapore from the Federation, the alliance leaders focused on continuing its policies. One involved the Malay language, which was the official language of Malaysia. UMNO sought to reduce the reliance on English in government affairs. In this, it was aided by PA, the Pan-Malaysian Islamic Party, which backed special rights for the Bumiputra, and the strengthening of Islam's position in public affairs. However, the PAP's Malaysian branch, which had now become Democratic Action Party DAP, took a very strong stance against this, and continued the expelled PAP's call for a Malaysian Malaysia. In 1968, the newly formed party Jerakan Rakyat Malaysia or Jerakan, led by Lim Chong Eu, joined DAP. Matters came to a head in the 1969 general election. When polling closed on the mainland peninsula West Malaysia on 10 May, it emerged the alliance had won less than half of the popular vote, although it was assured of 66 out of 104 parliamentary seats available. Much of the losses came from the MCA, thus straining relations between the two parties. 
However, the alliance was dealt an even larger blow on the state level, losing control of Kelantan, Perak, and Penang. The Yang di Pertuan Agong King declared a national emergency after being advised by the national government. Parliament was suspended, with a National Operations Council NOC led by Deputy Prime Minister Tun Abdul Razak of UMNO, taking over the government. Further polling in East Malaysia as a continuation of the general election was also postponed indefinitely. Although the cabinet still met under the Tunku as Prime Minister, his role was largely symbolic, with Tun Razak taking over the role of Chief Executive. UMNO backbencher Mahathir Mohamad, who had lost his parliamentary seat in the election, wrote a letter to the Tunku, commending his leadership. Mahathir organized a campaign with University of Malaya lecturer Raja Mukhtaruddin Dame, circulating his letter among the student body of local universities. Mass demonstrations broke out calling for Malay sovereignty and the Tunku's ouster. After rioting broke out in June, Home Affairs Minister Ismail Abdul Rahman and Tun Razak agreed to expel Mahathir and former Executive Secretary of UMNO Musa Hittim from the party for breaching party discipline. The suspended elections in East Malaysia were held in 1970, and gave the alliance government a solid two-thirds majority in parliament again. On 31 August that year, the Tunku announced the national ideology — Rukunagara — and his planned retirement as Prime Minister in favour of Tun Razak. He also stated Parliament would be restored the following year. The new economic policy After Tun Razak succeeded the Tunku in 1970, he began asserting UMNO's leadership in the alliance more strongly. When the Tunku led the coalition, he had always consulted alliance leaders regarding policy. If an alliance leader objected, the policy was not passed. Under Tun Razak, UMNO was the base of the alliance and thus the government. The NOC which he led until Parliament reconvened consisted of seven Malays, one Chinese and one Indian. In Tun Razak's cabinet, the two most powerful men other than him were Ismail Abdul Rahman and Ghazali Shafi, who had declared the Westminster-style parliamentary system inappropriate for Malaysia. Tun Razak also readmitted to the party, Ultras, who had been expelled, like Mahathir and Musa Hittim. Mahathir gained notoriety after his expulsion from UMNO by authoring The Malay Dilemma, a book promptly banned from Malaysia, which posited that the Malays are the definitive people of Malaysia, and thus deserved special rights as the sovereign people of the nation. It also controversially argued that the Malays needed affirmative action to overcome deficiencies in their genetic stock. Hussein An, son of UMNO founder Dato An Jafar, soon became a rising star in UMNO. After Ismail died suddenly of a heart attack in 1973, Hussein An succeeded him as Deputy Prime Minister. In the cabinet reshuffle that promoted Hussein An, Mahathir was given the key post of Minister for Education. The Tun Razak government announced the New Economic Policy in 1971. Its stated goal was to eventually eradicate poverty irrespective of race through a rapidly expanding economy which emphasized to increase the Malays' share in the national economy to a reasonable portion between all the races. The NEP targeted a 30% Malay share of the economy by 1990. The government contended that this would lead to a just society, Masharakat Adil, the latter slogan being used to promote acceptance of the policy. Quotas in education and the civil service that the constitution had explicitly provided for were expanded by the NEP, which also mandated government interference in the private sector. For instance, 30% of all shares in initial public offerings IPOs would be disbursed by the government to selective bumiputras. The old civil service hiring quota of four Malays for every non Malays was effectively disregarded in practice. Between 1969 and 1973, 98% of all new government employees were Malay. Five new universities were opened under the NEP, two of which were targeted to focus on the poor Malays and Muslim citizens. Tun Razak also began shoring up the government by bringing in several former opposition parties into the fold of the alliance. Jerikan, PPP, PA, and several former opposition parties in East Malaysia joined the coalition, which was renamed as Barisan Nasional. 
Barisan was formally registered as an organization in 1974, the same year in which a general election was held. There had been much internal conflict in the National Front regarding the election. In 1973, Lim Keng Yek and several supporters of his aggressive pro Chinese stance left the MCA for Jerichan. This contributed to internal strife, as the MCA was no longer the sole representative of Chinese interests in the National Front. Discontent among student organizations in Malaysian universities soon posed a new problem for the UMNO led government. The student movement were influenced by anarchist sentiments that their overseas counterpart. However, Mahathir, in his capacity as Minister for Education, issued a stern warning to university students and faculty not to become involved in politics. However, amidst allegations that farmers in rural states were starving due to government policies, massive student demonstrations were held in December 1974. These were false allegations as there were no known facts that any of the farmers or their families died because of starvation. Most of the demonstrators were Malays, and their ringleaders, which included Anwar Ibrahim, founder of Angkatan Belia Islam Malaysia the Islamic Youth Movement of Malaysia, or ABIM, were detained under the Internal Security Act, which effectively allows the government to detain anyone it sees as a threat to national security for an indefinite period. In 1975, Parliament passed amendments to the Universities and University Colleges Act which banned students from expressing support of or holding positions in any political party or trade union without written consent from the university's vice-chancellor. The Act also banned political demonstrations from being held on university campuses. In 1976, however, mass demonstrations were held at the Mara Institute of Technology, protesting the UUCA. Mahathir then threatened to revoke the scholarships of the students, most of whom relied on public support to pay their way through university. BN was also challenged in Sarawak after the 1974 election, which saw the Sarawak National Party SNAP led by James Wong become tied with the DAP as the most important opposition party in parliament, both of them holding nine seats each. SNAP had campaigned against BN on a platform of opposing Chief Minister Abdul Rahman Yaakub's pro Malay policies, charging them with alienating the rural indigenous natives of Sarawak, such as the Iban. SNAP had been expelled from the alliance in 1965 for supporting increased autonomy for Sarawak, which was impossible to attain as Sarawak has already stated their claim prior to their agreement in joining the Federation of Malaysia. After the election results were released, Abdul Rahman ordered the detention of James Wong under the Sedition Act. SNAP elected a new leader, Leo Maggi, who secured the release of Wong and the entry of SNAP into BN in 1976. In Sabah, the Alliance and then National Front controlled the state government through the United Sabah National Organization, USNO, which strongly backed UMNO's pro Malay and pro Islam policies. In 1973, Islam was made the official Sabah state religion the official religion of Sabah was originally Christianity, as permitted by the agreement signed before the merger, and usage of indigenous languages such as those of the Kadazan people was discontinued in favor of the Malay language. The USNO chief minister, Mustafa Harun, was also known for favoring political patronage as a means of allocating valuable timber contracts, and living an extravagant lifestyle, being ferried to his $1 million Queensland home by jets provided with Sabahan public funds. In the 1974 election, Pekimas attempted to contest, eventually winning almost 40% of the vote. However, it failed to win any parliamentary or state assembly seats, with USNO holding onto the state government. Topic UMNO Baru New UMNO On the 24th of April 1987, UMNO held its annual General Assembly and Triennial Party election. The then Prime Minister and Party President Mahathir Mohamad faced his first party election in 12 years, having been elected unopposed since the 1975 UMNO election. The politics of the Malays, particularly UMNO politics, had undergone a sea change in the first few years of the Mahathir stewardship, and the party presidency was challenged for the second time in 41 years. The first challenge was a dull affair in which Hussein An was opposed by a minor party official named Suleiman Palestin. In fact, in the early 1950s, Tunku Abdul Rahman's presidency had also been challenged by C. M. Yusuf, who later became the speaker of the Dewan Rakyat, but Tunku was not properly considered an incumbent then, being only a caretaker president. The 1987 contest was a vastly different matter. 
Mahathir was opposed by his very popular former finance minister, Tenku Razali Hamza. The press took to referring to Mahathir and his supporters as Team A, and Razali's camp as Team B. Team B included then Deputy Prime Minister Tun Musa Hidam, who was also the incumbent Deputy President of UMNO seeking re election, as well as Datuk Suhaimi Kamaruddin, the former head of UMNO Youth and President of the Belia 4B Youth Organization. Team B was critical of Mahathir's policies, arguing that the Malaysian New Economic Policy had failed to benefit the poor Malays. It also criticized Mahathir's leadership style, alleging he acted unilaterally without consulting other leaders in UMNO and the Barisan Nasional. Team B was also perceived as less Islamist than Mahathir's faction. Mahathir claimed that the charges against him were groundless, and suggested that his opponents were fracturing Malay unity and were only motivated by greed. Eventually, Mahathir was returned to office. However, he was elected with such a small majority of 43 761 against 718 votes that questions were immediately raised about his mandate. Team B supporters, many of whom had been anticipating a victory of similar margins, suspected that the election had been fixed. The Team B candidate for deputy president, Musa Hidam, had also been defeated by Ghaffar Baba of Team A, while two of the three vice presidents were Team A candidates. The Supreme Council comprised 16 Team A candidates and 9 Team B candidates. Allegations were made that several delegates who had voted were drawn from UMNO branches not properly registered. There were also several unproved allegations being bandied about that the balloting process had not been above board. Nevertheless, Razali pledged to support Mahathir, provided that a witch hunt was not launched. However, Mahathir promptly purged the government cabinet of all Team B members, and launched similar reshuffles in state and local governments. On 25 June 1987, an appeal was filed by 12 of the UMNO delegates to have the Assembly and the election of April 1987 declared null. After one of the delegates, Hussein bin Manap, withdrew unexpectedly in August from filing the appeal, the remaining litigants have since become famous as the UMNO 11. Although Razali and Musa Hidam were not among the plaintiffs, it was widely believed that Razali was funding the appeal. After a series of interlocutory hearings over the discovery of documents that took more than seven months, the matter finally came before Justice Harun Hashim in the Kuala Lumpur High Court on 4 February 1988. The judge ruled that under the existing law he had no option but to find the party, UMNO, to be an unlawful society due to the existence of several unregistered branches an illegal act under the Societies Act of 1966. The question of the assembly itself being illegal therefore became academic. It is a very hard decision to declare UMNO unlawful, said Justice Datuk Harun Hashim in his February 4 judgment. But the law was made by our parliament and certainly UMNO was aware of the Societies Act because they were in the majority in parliament at all times when the law was made, under the 1966 Act, amended five times over the years, and most recently by Mahathir's government, each of the society's branches has to register separately with the registrar. The Tunku and former UMNO President Hussein An set up a new party called UMNO Malaysia, which claimed to be the successor to the old UMNO. UMNO Malaysia was supported mainly by members of the Team B faction from UMNO, but Mahathir was also invited to join the party leadership. However, the party collapsed after the Registrar of Societies refused to register it as a society without providing an explanation. Mahathir showed no interest in reviving UMNO, and instead he set in motion the machinery to form a new surrogate party, and in due course, registered a party formally called Pertubuhan Kabangsan Malayu Bursatu or UMNO a week after UMNO Malaysia's registration was rejected. Eventually the suffix new was dropped, and UMNO Baru became both the de facto and de jure successor of UMNO with the old UMNO's assets handed over. Most of its leaders, however, were selected from Team A of the old UMNO, with Team B ignored. In 10th general election in 1999, rocked by the arrest and trial of former UMNO deputy Anwar Ibrahim and the subsequent formation of the Barisan Alternative Opposition Coalition, UMNO's share dipped to 54% of the vote and 102 out of 144 seats. Topic: Post Mahathir. 
After Mahathir stepped down as president of UMNO in 2003, he was replaced by his designated successor, Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, who by virtue of his new position also became Prime Minister of Malaysia. Najib Razak, the son of Tun Abdul Razak, took over as the Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia. In the 11th general election in 2004, Barisan Nasional, under Abdullah's leadership, enjoyed a landslide victory. However, in the 12th general election in 2008, the coalition for the first time fell short of a two-thirds majority in the parliament. UMNO chief ministers were ousted in the states of Selangor, Perak, Penang and Kedah. As a result, Abdullah resigned as president of UMNO and prime minister in 2009. He was succeeded by Najib. Under Najib's leadership, UMNO gained in the 13th general election and retake Kedah state. Eventually, Najib's rule came to an end on 9 May 2018, when Mahathir, himself a former UMNO president, and the Pakatan Harapan coalition won the 14th general election by gaining 45 seats, with UMNO losing 54, putting an end to 61 years of UMNO rule which began since the country's independence in 1957. Ideology UMNO overtly represents the Malays of Malaysia, although any Bumiputra indigenous Malaysian, a category which includes people such as the non-Malay and usually non-Muslim Kadazan, Iban, Dayak, etc. of East Malaysia may join the party. The party propagates Katuanan Melayu, the concept that the Bumiputra, including ethnic Malays, enjoy a special status within the country by virtue of their earlier settlement of the lands that now form Malaysia and as a result of the recognition of Malays in Article 153 of the Constitution of Malaysia. <laughs> Presidents of the United Malays National Organization Structure and membership Current office bearer Official source Elected representatives Topic Dewan Negara Senate Topic Senators Topic Dewan Rakyat House of Representatives Topic Members of Parliament of the 14th Malaysian Parliament UMNO has 37 MPs in the House of Representatives. Dewan Undangan Negri State Legislative Assembly General election results Topic State election results Topic Controversies Topic Challenge to UMNO's right to exist Every year, UMNO is obliged to hold the General Assembly to extend their rule according to the clauses set by the Registry of Societies Rose, Malaysia. And once every five years, UMNO is obliged to appoint their highest bodies. The last time UMNO held the election of the highest division and council level was on 19 October 2013. So the new election was supposed to be held on 19 April 2018. Their application for the postponement of the election until 19 October 2019 has to be approved by ROS in accordance with Clause 10.16. But critics have claimed that this is illegal and supposedly the existence of an UMNO organization is banned.
equals equals notes